All right, so this is the first video of our miniature train project. So if you haven't done so already, please make sure that your file name or your document name is train-class-name. So then I'm able to find it later when I am grading. All right, so our first piece that we're gonna be doing is the hitch magnet. So the reason why I'm doing these parts a little bit out of order is I'm putting them in kind of ease of use for you creating them on your own. Um, and also it follows along with the lessons that we'll have in class. So the first thing we need to do is draw the front of our hitch magnet. So I'm gonna click on sketch. I'm gonna click on the front plane and now to flatten it out so we can actually see what's going on from a better angle. We're going to click on the front of the cube. So from here, I'm going to place in two circles using the center point circle. So you can see this section right here, we have one circle and another circle. So I'm going to place in both circles. So now we can go dimension. So I'm going to do the outside dimension first. So I'm going to click on the outside ring click to place it and now I can type in my dimension. So the dimension for the outside diameter is 0 0.45 inches. So you can see it kind of got a little bit small. So we're going to zoom in. So what I'm going to do is click on this little cube right here. Um, not the one where we show the orientation, but the little tiny uh, three colored gray one. So zoom to window is the one that I use the most. And then I can click and drag and release and it zooms right in. Uh, if you're on a laptop, that's what you're gonna need to do. If you're on a desktop um, or you're just using a mouse, you can just use the scroll wheel and do the same action without having to do that extra step. All right, now we're gonna our <laughs> dimension the diameter for our inside circle. So go to the dimension tool, place it in, and our inside diameter is a quarter inch, so that's 0 0.25. So from here, we can click on our green check mark and we can extrude. So for this one, you want to extrude just this outside ring. All right, so from here, you can't really tell what you're extruding. So what I like to do is tip it to the edge so I have a better view of what I'm actually doing. So from here, I can see the depth says one inch. That's not what I want at all. What I want, if we look at our little drawing right here, is actually a quarter inch, so 0.25. All right, then click on our green check mark and now our hitch magnet is done. So what we're going to do is right click on part studio one, rename, and we are going to rename this one number three dash hitch. Hitch magnet. All right. So now that we have our part done, we need to make our work drawing for our part. So we're going to click on the plus sign. We are going to create a drawing. So in this whole project, we're going to end up with two different size uh, drawings that we're going to be using. We're going to be using A and C. A is just our typical one sheet of printer paper, and C is going to be four sheets of printer paper if you tape them together into a rectangle. So for the first few drawings that we're going to be doing, we're going to be sticking with A. So make sure A is selected, A inch, so ANSI A inch, and then click OK. All right, so from here we're going to add in our hitch magnet. What we want to do is add in our front view. So you want your front view to look the same that mine does. If for some reason yours doesn't look the same, what you can do is go to the view orientation and change it to one of these other options. So even if it doesn't say front, that's totally fine. Um, Cause sometimes when you make a part, you put it at a different angle when you're drawing it as a part file. But then when it comes to the work drawing, you're going to, uh, angle it a slightly differently. So for this one, I happen to have it lined up nicely. So I'm going to place in my front view. And now I can place in my top view. Now clicking on the front view again and place in my right side. Click on the front view again. And now I can place in my isometric. So from here, I'm going to click escape on my keyboard. And now that I have all my views placed in, I'm going to right click 
go to show hide and show shaded view for my isometric view because I want to have it shaded. All right, and then also, just because this is something that students tend to forget a lot, I'm going to put it in right now before we go to do any other dimensions or anything. So the title. So the title for this is going to be Hitch Magnet. And then our drawing number is going to be part three. So I know in the past, before we had the title and the part number be the exact same thing. That's because before when we were doing this, we only had a few pieces that we were working on, not too many, maybe like one or two, um, or it really didn't have a specific name for each of the parts, so it worked out fine. But for this one, because they have a specific part number, so we're going to use that as our drawing number. All right, so now that we have that all set, we're going to go back to our different views. And we're going to add in our center mark. So we're going to use this one right here. So when we place in the center mark, we're going to be going to our front view. So I'm going to be placing it on the outside circle. So I would also place it for the inside circle, but because these two are lined up directly on top of each other, I only need to add in one. So from here, now we can add in our center lines. Oh, actually, I just noticed before we add it in the center lines, we actually need our hidden lines because I'm going to need to use those in a minute. So you can see here we have the hole drilled in, but we can't really see where it's located right there. So what we're going to do is right click on our top view, show slash hide, show hidden lines. So that brings in these right here. So now we actually have the hidden lines to reference. All right, going to do the same thing on our right side. Okay. So now we can use our center lines to place them in. So there's two different types of center lines and we need to place in two. So I'm going to show you each one. So two point center line is the one that I don't use that much, but it is very useful for when you need it. So for here, I'm finding the center of my line, center of my other line, and it places my center line in right there. So that one's useful for parts that are not um, super regular on the sides or anything. Maybe there's like a little bit of difference or different placement or something. Um, it's one of those things where you just kind of get a feel for it eventually for which one you need. So the next one we're going to use is the edge to edge center line. This is honestly the one that I use the most. Um, two point center line has its uses, but edge to edge is the one that is my go to. So for this one, you click on the two hidden lines and it places it in right in the center. So that one I like a little bit more for some things because maybe this part is a lot longer and maybe I don't have very specific center points of this edge line that I have highlighted right here to click, <clears throat> sorry, to click on. So therefore the edge to edge just works a little bit cleaner. So it kind of all depends on what you're doing for which one you're going to use. So now we can add in our dimensions. So we can click on our outside diameter inside diameter and our depth. So hitting escape to back out of it. So you can see that we have all three of the dimensions. So our depth is just kind of a standalone dimension. It's depth. So that's it. The ones that are a little bit stranger are these two diameter ones. So with these, it actually shows you the height and the width at the same time. So that's something that you're probably not quite used to yet. So it kind of has a dual purpose and also, well, tells you it's the diameter. All right, so that would be our entire one. Oh, we almost forgot to rename this drawing because remember, we're going to have a lot of them. All right, hitch magnet. And oh, I put the number sign in the wrong spot. There we go. Now it looks cleaner. All right, so hopefully you guys are able to follow along with the video and it's all making sense. Um, so good luck, and if you're ready to move on to the next one, move on to the next video.